Welcome to, to EXO Digital's presentation for UX Australia, Barking Dogs, Crying Babies and Delivery Men, Innovation During a Crisis. So I think that um, everyone can probably uh, relate to, to the blue words, barking dogs, crying babies and delivery men, uh, as we've gone into a remote working environment. Uh, you know, we, we have disruptions throughout the day. Um, Pierce and I both have dogs, we'll be on Zoom and, and things will, will happen. Uh, delivery men will turn up. Um, and we've been trying to work out, you know, how we innovate um, during the crisis, which is the, um, the crux of our presentation. So uh, thank you very much for attending and, and let's get started. My name is David Lindberg. I'm the Client Services Director at Exo Digital. And I'm Piers O'Brien. I'm the Associate Design Director. So Piers and I work very closely together uh, on internal products, uh, pro projects, um, external projects with clients, and also with our partner firms to be able to support our people to be the best that they can be. So Exo Digital is a design and innovation company. Uh, we've recently rebranded, uh, it's been about two years actually, so not, not so recent, um, to Exo Digital. Uh, we have a very diverse team, uh, diverse experience and backgrounds, uh, which enables us to produce uh, really unique insights into uh, designing and implementing uh, digital solutions. So we work with uh, a whole raft of, of different companies, um, our partner firms, ANZ and AGL. We work with startups, we work with SMEs. Uh, we're, we're leading the development of, of products, digital products and creating exceptional experiences. So during times of crisis, uh, you know, that there are amazing opportunities. It's a very tough time for, for everyone. I understand that. Um, but the, the logos that you can see there, the, the big international logos other than Mr. Yum, uh, all of these companies uh, were founded during a recession and they've all gone on to become uh, household names. So FedEx is a company that um, is, is a company that's close to my heart. I used to work for FedEx uh, many years ago. Uh, and FedEx was born during a, a time of extreme turbulence. So um, FedEx, uh, when they, they first started, they went into the, the oil shock in 1973 when OPEC wouldn't service the United States and you know their, their fuel costs just skyrocketed. Uh, so it was really hard for them to be able to maintain the operation of, of their business. Fred Smith was a CEO uh, at that time and really struggled paying the bills. So um, the story goes that Fred took uh, $5,000, uh, the last $5,000 that he had, he uh, went to Las Vegas, put it on blackjack and won $27,000. So that $27,000 enabled him to pay the fuel costs for FedEx for, for one week. And during that week, he was able to, to get funding and find other investors for the business. Uh, what's really interesting about FedEx as well is that they they have a, a, a unique culture. And um, back, back in the day, people were paid by check, a paper check that they would take to the bank. Uh, and many within FedEx didn't cash their checks. And the, the checks sit um, on their, their walls and frames and are worn as a, as a badge of honour to be able to get FedEx through that really difficult time of crisis. Uh, if we look at Mr. Yum, um, a Melbourne-based company, local-based company, um, they started just before the, the pandemic, uh, but during the pandemic really hit their straps. And I think that Mr. Yum is a great example of a business that, uh, that did some research, that listened to the market, and then from this was able to, to grow and, because they're in this unique position to be able to support the hospitality industry. We're going to discuss a little bit more about that later uh, because um, Mr. Young came up in our research when we looked at, uh, at one of our internal projects. Cool. So uh, first, we just wanted to take you through a little bit how the uh, last year and a half of COVID madness has affected us, as I'm sure it's affected most of you guys. What challenges that kind of came up for our business and what we did to address them for our team? So what changed? Well, for our industry, not much. We are very lucky being in our industry that most of our tools are already digital. Uh, most of our processes are already digital. We use G Suite, uh, Docs, Slides, Sheets for all of our documentation. Uh, we use Slack to communicate with each other. We use Miro for our research and ideation. And we use Figma to design. So 
while our tools didn't really change and a lot of our processes, uh, a lot of our workflow didn't really change, we still had to really make sure that we were focusing on our processes and making sure that uh, our team was being as efficient as possible during the crisis. So before we were getting into a room together and bashing out some ideas on a, on a whiteboard, which I think we all really miss. Uh, and now we're flying around as little cursors on mirror. Uh, for most of us, that was a bit of a natural change. Uh, and for me, it was a very welcome one because I was always the person that had to translate all of those little post-its into Miro anyway. So now it's already documented for me. So I find that quite easy. Um, but we also had a lot of team members that weren't as familiar with Miro. Uh, so we had to spend time to make sure that those team members were you know, comfortable with the tool, that they could become uh, natural and upskill in that tool because that's kind of essential that we're creating you know, those efficient processes with each other. Before we were pitching proposals in person, which is just a completely different vibe. We're getting that in-person feedback to what we're being, to what we're presenting, and we're being able to adjust our approach in real time. Um, and we're also able to build those real life connections and the relationships that we had. Uh, now we're spending a lot of time making sure that our proposals are really locked down and really clear and perfecting them to craft a compelling story around our process and what we're trying to deliver. <laughs> Um, we've had to make sure that we're building that same relationship and connection virtually as well, and also making sure that we're delivering the wow factor. Uh, so it's really important that we're not just sending a deck over, but we're having a call like this one, uh, where we're able to communicate as best as we can. Before we were heading out uh, for drinks on a Friday night, which was always one of my favorites, and this is uh, us with the team here. Uh, and now what we've what we've done is we've, we've moved that into a games night uh, on Zoom. So it's really important that we give the space for our team to put their tools down, come together, have some fun and have a moment where it's not, it's not about work. Uh, it's just about us kind of coming together and connecting. Um, we still had a bunch of challenges during the process. Uh, we started to have communication breakdowns projects slowed and weren't delivering results and our team members began to work in silos. Um, so I think this is probably very common across our industry, uh, but we worked really hard to figure out uh, ways to overcome them that suited our team and our business. So the issues that we were experiencing, uh, we, we'd moved from an environment where we had four people um, in an office when I first started with Exo Digital and um, We'd then gone into a remote environment due to the pandemic. Um, we had intentions to go back into the office, uh, but I remember the conversation that I had with Rob and uh, I said to him, you know, do we really need an office? You know, offices are expensive. And if we're not going to be there for, you know, six months, who knows how long, um, you know, how are we going to, to manage this change? So um, as Piers pointed out, um, not everything was smooth. Things started to break down. And uh, so we, uh, we implemented social contracts within the team. Now, social contracts are, are designed to, to help relationships, um, to help people understand what is expected of them. Uh, so we had a, an overall exo-digital social contract. Lucky for us, we were able to get together to discuss this uh, in person. And it was really interesting to get the feedback from the team about you know, what social contracts uh, represented for them. So to give you an example, you know, if, if you go um, to, to Bali and you, you lay on a horn um, and you're riding a bike, everyone just expects that, that that's actually quite normal because um, it's polite. You're letting people know that, that you're coming and get out of the way. Um, if you lay on the horn in Melbourne or in Sydney or anywhere in Australia, people are going to think that you're a bit of a dick. So, um, you know, we, we don't do that in our country and that's a, that's a social norm. So um, we, uh, we have the same thing with, with social contracts. Overarching um, exo digital social contract and then each area of the business, be it um, our, our developers uh, in, in IT, uh, our experienced designers, uh, sales and marketing, uh, those groups will have their own social contracts and, um, and how they, they want to behave um, and the things that are, are normal to them. It could be as simple as, you know, when you come into a Zoom meeting, turn your phone off because we want to be able to have everyone concentrate and be there and be present. Uh, 
one thing to remember with social contracts, when a new team member joins the team, you have to rerun it and replay because that member is, is new. They need to be aware of, of what the norms are. Um, so you need to bring them up to speed. So it's one of those things that is um, continually growing. The other thing that um, was really important to us was making sure that we had a connection with the team through the EXO office day. And this was really interesting for me because we'd done, um, we'd done remote for about six months and then we did um, a pulse check and uh, we used small improvements to be able to do that. So um, check that out, it's a great system. Um, and the feedback was, we really want to get back into the office. So we had a bit of a discussion about how many days, which days that they should be. Uh, we came up with uh, Wednesday in the middle of the week uh, and said, great, in two weeks time, we're going to get back into the office on, on a Wednesday. So we've got a share space uh, in the city that we use. Uh, the one thing that was really interesting about this was that everyone said they really wanted it. And then when we had it, everyone was like, oh, breaks on. Do we really have to go back into the office? Um, so Rob and myself and uh, the, the, the leadership team just put a, a, a line in the sand and said, we are coming back in on a Wednesday. And the photo that you can see there was our first Wednesday back in the office. And um, it, was a, it was a great experience. I think that everyone needed it. Um, everyone gets comfortable sitting uh, behind their laptop at home. Um, it's really easy to manage your life doing that. Uh, but once we were back in the office, um, it was really great to, to be together again. We still wanted ways to connect. And we found that um, having that once a week connection enables, uh, enabled us to look at our projects, to whiteboard, to go back to some of the ways that we were doing things. Um, and we really enjoyed that. But I think that we all understood that um, that probably wasn't the norm for us anymore, that remote working was really our norm. Games Night has already been mentioned and, uh, and Cheeky Treats. So um, Games Night started out as just, just drinks, uh, virtual drinks. I used to get a, a cocktail shaker and, you know, make some drinks. And uh, we, we knew that that was probably not going to be able to keep everyone engaged. Um, not everyone drinks for, for a start. Um, so uh, we decided to, to put some games in and, uh, and do some digital games, which I was really happy about. Um, the, the guys and girls within the team um, all really enjoy it. Uh, the snap camera plays a huge part. As you can see, Pierce is looking pretty attractive there. Um, and our director, um, Rob, um, he had a Shrek overlay and ended up being Shrob. So he's, he's got this nickname as well now. Um, Rob is also amazing at, at just sending out little treats. So um, you'd be sitting there and then the delivery man would knock on the door. There's the, our reference again to our title. Um, and you'd open the door and there'd be a, a box of donuts. So, um, you know, it was really important to keep the team engaged through um, cheeky treats and through the games nights as well. Uh, so let's have a listen to what the team thinks about all of this. EXO gave me the opportunity to learn alongside bright, talented designers, developers and marketers. They allow me to be myself and remind us to all have fun. A lot of why I liked EXO was the mix between remote working and in-person if you're based in Melbourne and catching up with my coworkers regularly is really wonderful. I get people to bounce ideas off and I get to talk to people I don't normally work with. I've been made to feel part of the team from day one and I feel that I'd have no problem in approaching anyone for support. We have design huddles where we get to share ideas and get feedback on what we're currently working on, which is really important for someone like myself to continue working on my craftsmanship and also refine my skill set as an experienced designer. Good full team there. Um, so now we wanted to take you through a little bit how we changed our thinking around flexible working um, and how that kind of changed during the crisis. So David's kind of touched a little bit on that around why we didn't want to go back. Um, so we'll take that, take you guys through that now. Um, so what changed for our industry? Well, a fair bit. Uh, the old way of working didn't really make sense to us anymore. Um, so as we brought up, most of us coming from Melbourne know that we had to adjust very early and very fast to the new ways of working. I think we spent most of the year in lockdown uh, last year, um, which was very tough. Uh, but with that and uh, new talent coming in that we were interviewing, uh, we were starting to see that they were taking advantage of working from home or working where they wanted. Um, so we started to think about how we could view this as an opportunity and a way for us to stick out in a crowded market. 
So before uh, we were kind of chained to the city and our office jobs. Uh, and now we've got team members who are moving out closer to nature, the beach and the lifestyles that they value. Uh, this also dramatically changed the way we looked at recruiting. Before we just looked at talent from Melbourne because that's where we were all based. But now we've got team members across the entire country from Adelaide, Tasmania, Gold Coast, Sydney, and Melbourne. So it's really amazing to have that kind of uh, exposure across the team. I've got a couple of team members that call me up every morning and say they've just come from a surf or others that have just gone for a nature walk. Uh, and I'm stuck in Melbourne in lockdown, which is great for me. Uh, we went from working in an office every day uh, to working from home and all the, challenge that, all the challenges that arose there. Uh, from cheeky Labradors like David and I know, to try and get up on the desk when you're trying to present to a client, um, to staying motivated during the day. And uh, I think David and I can say that Labradors are great companions, uh, but they're terrible teammates during the day. Uh, before we had direct connection and feedback to the team, and that's something that I really miss. Um, having that kind of in-person, face-to-face connection, being able to see and respond to each other, it's something that I think is really missing in what we have now, which is a bit of a shame. Um, and now, after this kind of crisis, sometimes at work it can feel like you're left alone, that you're in a silo, and you're in a bit of a void as you wait for people to get back to you, or that you're not quite sure how to proceed with your work. So it can still offer up a bunch of challenges. Um, so I think what that kind of stood out for us was that we needed to provide a way for our team members to upskill. Uh, we needed to find a way to engage with our team who were working from home and who were struggling. And we needed to kind of look at when team members were feeling alone, what we could do to solve that. Uh, so as, as part of um, our process, we went back to the team and said, what do you need to be able to engage better? What do you need to feel supported and feel connected? And some of that feedback was around learning and upskilling. So, uh, you know, from, from my perspective, you need to have a focus on your, your own learning and where you, where you want to go. So we're very focused on self-directed learning. Um, it's important that we provide ways for the team to upskill and to utilise online courses as much as possible. So um, th this hasn't been um, a, a process that we've got right yet. We're still working through this. Um, so we've assigned everyone uh, a, a budget uh, to be able to, to look at online courses. Uh, when that individual sits down with their team lead, uh, we're trying to understand where they want to go with their career and uh, what they want to upskill up in, uh, make some recommendations um, based on you know, what we've been through ourselves and courses that, that we've done online, um, and try and share that through Slack as well. So if someone's done an amazing course, that'll pop up on Slack, and then others will be able to do that. Um, it's also about reading as well. So we've got a book club, which is run by um, one of the, the lovely ladies uh, at EXO. And, uh, you know, we're, we're putting up uh, books that, that you can read and opportunities to be able to educate yourself, which is really important. As I said, though, it's still a work in process. We'd really like to have uh, a whole um, course directory uh, that people are able to go to. Uh, in their own time and uh, and upskill themselves and stuff that you could even do together as well, which is really important to keep that connection. For us, where you uh, work is really not that important. So we have Hugh the Surfer up in uh, in Byron Bay, we have Stevie B down in down in Tassie, uh, we've got people in Adelaide, in Sydney, in Melbourne, and we've got Paris who has just bought herself a vehicle, um, similar to the one that you can see on the screen there, uh, which Paris is gonna fit out and then travel around uh, Australia. Uh, we really don't care where you work as long as you have the, the right attitude and the, the right connection with us to be able to support our clients and the, and the team. So Paris is, uh, she works with, with me in, in sales and marketing very closely. And all you need is to have access to the internet. And if the internet is down, you just need to have a phone. Uh, we want to make it easy um, so that um, our teams can live their, their best life where they, where they want to be. The other thing that's really important to us is, is mentorship. And, uh, you know, mentorship uh, is really 
it's looked upon as, you know, those that are, are lead supporting those that are coming up through the business. But I find that mentorship works both, both ways. Uh, we deal with a lot of really uh, amazing talent that comes out of university. We want to harness that energy and that enthusiasm. That enthusiasm. Um, I'm learning all the time from uh, the, the designers and the, uh, the, the tech leads that are coming through. Uh, so, you know, I love to support and mentor those within the team, but I also like to learn from them as well. And we've got a very strong culture within the team um, to be able to do this. We use small improvements as well to leave um, feedback for team members. This is, you know, part of our culture. So um, if someone does something well, uh, we like to highlight that. Um, we like to make a bit of a fuss, even about small things, so small wins. It doesn't need to be, you know, we've just delivered a project to a client and, you know, we've got this amount of ROI or this feedback from the client. It can be something as, as small as you did a great job today, so thank you very much for that. And I think it's something that's so important. It's made me such a better designer because I have to vocalize what my design process is. So when I'm vocalizing it, I'm understanding it more fully and I'm having to explain it to people. So I find it to be one of the most valuable things that I've taken on um, during the last couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing that we've had to get used to is, uh, is remote onboarding. So um, when you start in person uh, in an organization, you get that face-to-face -face straight away, big smile, welcome to the team. It's a little bit harder to do that with a remote onboarding session. So um, you can see that uh, this, this is Paris when uh, Paris first started with the business. It was during a period where we weren't in lockdown. So we were able to get out and deliver the, the laptop, mobile phone and whatever else for a person to get started in their job. We can't always do that, and we know that. And as people join us from around the country, and hopefully internationally as well, people working in other countries, we're going to have to be very smart about the way that we do things and getting them their technology and also getting them set up. So um, no rocket science about this. We developed an onboarding pack. Uh, the first experience needs to be exceptional. So we wanted to make sure that they felt the love, they had all the information that they need in the, in the pack, it's still a work in progress. Uh, we, we haven't got it right, but um, it's something that we're very committed to. The other thing we're committed to is the offboarding process. So if someone decides that um, there's an amazing opportunity elsewhere, we celebrate that because we've been a part of their growth. And I think that it's really important um, as well for the offboarding process. It needs to be memorable. So what we do is we develop a, um, a video for them. Uh, it, lets their, their teammates talk about what an amazing experience that they've had. Um, and then we use a, a system as well, which is digital to be able to get them a gift so they can go away and, and spend some coin and, uh, and do something that they want to do with that, uh, with that money. So um, the remote onboarding and offboarding process, we're still working on, as I said, uh, but it's really important uh, that we celebrate those that, that leave the business and go on to, to different things and, uh, and, their careers will, will grow because of that and they will remember their fantastic experience with exo digital now let's hear from some of the things the team have to say at the moment i work two days from uh, co-working and three days from home and so having this flexibility of working from home but also from a co-working clearly improve my motivation and, and as well productivity no matter what level you are in the company your ideas are valid we always have sessions of showcasing brainstorming and kind of elevating everybody's ideas up i find review sessions super valuable where having someone to be a sounding board creates productive discussions that sparks ideas. And what I love most is that we look out for each other's blind spots. The support system I have in EXO is infallible because I have always looked up to my seniors and colleagues in EXO for guidance and I've always been looking to get feedback to continually improve my work. Being in Sydney, it's been a fully remote role for me. Having said that though, our current team is very flexible and responsive. I've never had any communication issues to be honest. Everyone's super autonomous but willing to jump on a call if you need help or to have a discussion about something. So lastly, we wanted to take you through how we decided to focus on something that was important to us in design. Um, sometimes in design, you don't get the opportunity to work on a project that you think is doing good in the world, or it might just be, you know, something that you need to do. Um, but with EXO, we decided that we wanted to prioritize that as our focus. Uh, 
we wanted to showcase a recent project that we're working on. We're still a little bit away from releasing it, but we thought it'd be interesting to take you through kind of our process through the crisis, um, what tools and techniques we used, and uh, we'll probably have some more news on that soon. Uh, so what changed for us at, at EXO? We didn't want to just work, we wanted to innovate with purpose. So one thing that I've found in, uh, in working with designers is that um, designers want to be creative. They want to be uh, on the leading edge of design. They want to be working on something with social importance, uh, but unfortunately it's not always uh, able to, to be done. The, some of the jobs that we get with our clients, um, they're absolutely uh, crucial to the business, but I wouldn't say that they were creative. You know, it might be working on a, a, a style guide or a design system or something like that. It might be uh, researching the, the terminology on a, on a button, for, for example. Really important, driving ROI and revenue for that business. But for a designer, is it really going to get them out of bed every day? Maybe not. So we wanted to initiate a startup culture and mindset within the business. And uh, Rob and I had a discussion very early on uh, in the, the pandemic about you know, what, what this might look like. Uh, we wanted to provide a, a unique opportunity for people who were coming back to the business, perhaps from client side, or those that were, were on the bench between projects, um, for them to just jump straight back in to a project that everyone saw as, as really exciting and really beneficial. So our initial concept was, uh, was to look at what was happening in the hospitality space. Um, I've owned cafes and restaurants in the past and uh, Rob, uh, our director, has, uh, has a lot of contacts within that space and there was a lot of pain. People couldn't get their dine-in uh, experience because we were in lockdown. Uh, everyone was trying to pivot um, to, to remote and, uh, and the delivery system was being controlled by the, the large players in the market, DoorDash, Uber Eats, Deliveroo, and Menulog. Now these companies are charging 30 to 35%. And if you know anything about the restaurant industry, uh, your, your revenue about 30 to 35% of your, your total revenue is paid uh, towards getting staff for your business. So we went to market, we ran some research um, to, to understand uh, what was happening in the marketplace and the needs of the businesses and to test their assumptions as well. So our initial idea was instead of having these large uh, businesses you know, promoting themselves, how could we promote the business and have those businesses control the leads uh, that themselves? So instead of a lead going to Uber Eats and a new customer becoming an Uber Eats customer, how could we get the Gelato Messina down the road, um, a, a new customer, and get that stickiness with the brand? So rather than the brands of the large aggregators, let's get the brands of our customers and really promote that some way through a, a, a new and unique uh, process. So when we looked at the... Um, next slide, please, Piers. Thank you, sir. Uh, when we looked at the, the research... Um, it was really complicated. You know, there was a lot going on. Um, and I think that this was born out of the fact that there was, there was fear, there was a bit of frustration. There was, how do I pay my bills, keep the lights on? How do I keep my staff? Um, a lot of what uh, the businesses that we were talking to discussed was around community. How do I support my community? How do I um, engage locally to be able to provide a better service? Um, so one of the things we looked at was perhaps uh, someone going online and booking uh, an entree from one restaurant, a main from another and a bottle of wine and a delivery person going around picking all of that up and delivering that to a person's home. Uh, when we started looking at the mechanics of that and what that would look like, um, it, was, it was a lot more difficult than, than what we first thought. Uh, we really wanted to make sure that these hospitality businesses were the central focus, uh, but we weren't sure how we were going to, to do that. Uh, so this was our starting point. And then I think Pierce is gonna go into um, how we pivoted and, and what happened from there. Yeah, so um, I was one of those designers before I moved up into the associate design director role uh, that came back from a client and uh, was on this project. And when I started to flesh out what the what the product infrastructure was going to need uh 
I think we all had a bit of a panic moment because we needed about four different products, a user app, a driver app, a restaurant app, a CMS, all of this firing out into a custom branded experience for each hospitality uh, restaurant or cafe. Um, so we realized that we were biting off way more than we could chew uh, and stepping into an already crowded arena. arena. So we pivoted. Uh, we went back to our research to see how local users and businesses thought about community and how they interacted and engaged with each other. We have such a strong connection with local community in Australia, and it was really interesting to sit through all the interviews and learn what's important to our user base. Uh, some people that we interviewed had started community, community gardens in their front yard to connect with their neighbours. Uh, we had people that would only go to local businesses because they had a relationship of 30 years with the mom and pop stores. Um, and we also had a lot of users that were simply monetary focused. Uh, they, they loved their community. They supported local community, but also they were looking for a deal and anywhere that was giving that deal, that's where they go. Um, so it was quite an interesting process between people that are very passionate about local community, but what it means to actually support that community was quite different. So we started getting into some early design work from our research uh, and our initial idea was around a gamified experience that would encourage users to interact with those local businesses. Um, so potentially taking on challenges that would direct you into those businesses and you'd be moving up ranks. And we had so many different ideas around gaining levels, unlocking new local legend statuses, being able to gain ranks and move up leaderboards, uh, all centered around helping the community uh, and doing some good. Um, we're quite a lean team and the amount of features were really stacking up. Uh, and I think something that I didn't really realize until I really started to look into it, that a gamified experience is a large uh, infrastructure to build out in a product. Uh, so yeah, we realized that it was gonna be far too costly to build out a gamified experience because there's many different things that rely on that experience and they all have to be working together in parallel. Uh, so we were still early on in the design process, uh, so we pivoted again. Um, we started to think about how we can focus on the value. So we shifted our focus back to how we can actually help businesses and what we need to help them to get them out of the COVID crisis. And what people uh, and both business owners and users uh, and what they actually value uh, the most right now. So we pivoted our offering to focus on how to deliver value into the businesses from day one. And we landed on a challenge and reward system that incentivize users to get out and support local. So do a simple review challenge and we give you a reward and get you into the door of the business. Do a simple check-in challenge, you get a reward and we get you into that local business. So that's where we're currently sitting with the product which is trying to focus on what that value is. Uh, so we just wanted to highlight a few takeouts of what we think is valuable in the product process. Um, by pulling back and coming back to our DNA as a business, which is rooted into looking at what people and businesses actually want and need, instead of what we think they do, we're able to really lean into a product that has the potential to make a big impact on small and local businesses. Uh, and that's something that's really important to us. Uh, there's a lot of kind of pain right now in that industry as we're going through this crisis and our sixth lockdown in Melbourne. So it's something that we really want to focus on as our main kind of focus as a business, yeah. So what's really important um, going through this process with, with the Let's Go is we really have engaged with, uh, with businesses at, at a different level. It's been very emotive. Um, and I think that a lot of that is just due to the situation that we're in. Um, we've been able to talk to um, end users to see what they want out of the process and also to, um, to government agencies, to, to local government. 
So during our research, we uncovered that, that, that there's a move globally for um, communities to be within a 20 to 30 minute radius of your home where everything is available, your schools, your shopping, everything should be available within 30 minutes. And that's not a 30 minute car ride. Um, there's obviously a focus on um, environmental issues as well, which is really important. So we're always talking about how we can um, use that uh, within the app um, to create value for the end user. So our end users are going to be um, the, the general public, um, businesses, uh, small and large, and also uh, the, the community. So, you know, it might be a, a council that needs to engage with us through, through the app. Um, so we, we love working with, with smaller businesses. I think it's really important that we do engage uh, at that level as well. Um, and we are a, a business of entrepreneurs. We love people to have a side hustle and absolutely support people to do that. Uh, one of the team members had a side hustle. I'm going to give him a plug, Billy, Billy's Bubbles. Um, Billy worked for us um, and, you know, he's, he came to us and said, look, I've been doing this as a side hustle, but my business needs me. I, I'm going to have to leave. Um, that's a celebration because, um, you know, he's, he's obviously doing something that, that he loves and, uh, and we can support him to, to get into that business and, and make it a success. Uh, so it really is part of our, our DNA. And I think that it enables us to, to think outside the, the box in, in some cases because we are entrepreneurial and, uh, you know, a lot of the, the guys and girls are very commercially savvy, which is fantastic. Let's hear from the team. I've worked on the Let's Go Community app where we give users a fun, engaging way to help support their local businesses, being involved with user research and the visual design. I find it quite exciting and fun, yet challenging, and I can't wait to see how it evolves as the local communities interact with it. I think I could always go back and do better in the research and design phase. So at the moment, I'm working on an internal project. Uh, it's an application called Let's Go. It's about connecting local communities and local businesses. And the project is very fascinating because we, we feel like making a difference by supporting local economies, but also bringing people close together, which is very important today. If I could change something in this project, I think I would include like more user research and user testing. I am currently working on an internal project called Let's Go Community. It's been an awesome project to work on and pretty much expose me to all facets of mobile app development, having only previously worked across web projects. Ultimately, it's going towards a really great course for supporting local and being a great value add for businesses. If I could change one thing, though, potentially identifying some of the value propositions a little earlier on, as we have had to change or strip, I guess, a few features and functionality as a result. A lot of that feedback from the team is, is really valid for us as a business. Um, we are trialing things as we grow and, uh, you know, we, we don't always get it right. Some of the things we've implemented uh, haven't been successful. They either, either haven't been um, taken up by the team or some of the team has said, look, we're not getting value out of that. We need to change it um, into something that will, will give us that value. So moving into a 100% flexible working environment, um, we've, we've had to have a lot of trust in our people as well. Uh, to be able to, to do the right thing, um, to be able to communicate when, when they're needed and to be able to be part of, uh, of the team and, and the culture. So some things you've seen today, seen today uh, will work for your business, others won't. We're, we're not suggesting that um, we've got it right and uh, you know, we're the, the leader uh, in, in working remotely, we're certainly not. We're just giving everything a go and, um, and trying to support our people the best way we can. So um, if there's anything that we can do to assist you, uh, we would, would love to speak to you. Uh, we are always looking for, uh, for new clients. Um, so if you uh, are looking for a partner firm to work with, we would love to speak to you, which leads us into our last slide. So if you know someone who would uh, fit with in our team, uh, we are always looking for amazing people. So uh, we, we have a, uh, thousand dollars on offer. Uh, if you have someone who's interested, send a referral through to this address um, or click on the, uh, the QR code with your, um, your iPhone or your Android and uh, that will link you through to be able to set up a 15 minute chat with, uh, with myself or just pick up the phone and give us a call. We'd love to have a chat with you. 
Uh, so thank you very much for your attendance. Uh, we've really enjoyed um, presenting to you and uh, enjoy the rest of UX Australia. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for your attendance. Thanks a lot, guys. Do you have any suggestions for online team bonding activities? Yeah, look, I think that the, um, the, the games work really well for, for team bonding and uh, we do have those to send out to you. So um, yeah, if you um, just hang on, we will um, we'll send you the link and, uh, and you'll be able to see some of the games that we've used to engage our teams. Uh, will, will we be able to access more in-depth insights from some of the points that you've covered today? Absolutely. Uh, we will make the entire presentation available uh, and also we have the, uh, the video content as well um, if you would like to, um, to have access to the video. Uh, we have cooking clubs too. Fantastic. Yeah, they, they work really well. Um, what did we have um, last week? Uh, Maxi did Dun 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 Noodles. Is that right? Yes. I am going to have to look it up, <laughs> uh, right. which was uh, an, an amazing recipe. Yes, Dun Dun Noodles. That was it. Dun Fig Noodles. Yeah. <laughs> uh, will employees have access to shared offices around the country? Good question, Ken. Uh, look, at the moment, it's just in Melbourne because we've got, um, it was our head office here in Melbourne. So we've set that up. But absolutely, I think that if you um, if you need to, to get out of your, your home office and into a shared office, there's no reason why we can't set that up around the country. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy to do. So I would say yes, um, and great question and great for the future as well for, for EXO. And just on that uh, point before about uh, will there be more in depth, uh, we actually will be sending out a, a link to our landing page for UX Australia, where you can sign up to a newsletter uh, where we have packs together around onboarding, offboarding, our favorite games nights, which I feel like uh, is pretty fun, and uh, our social contracts as well. So there's a lot of content in there for you guys. Thank so you once again. All the best. See you later. Thank you very much, guys.